Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today is Baxter Travel Webcast and Tourism Ireland to present Ireland's Ancient East. With us today we have Kate Smith from Tourism Ireland, Michelle McGuire from Ireland's Blue Book, and Lil Grand from Mount Juliet Hotel. I, at this point I would like to remind all of our audience members that should you have a question for the moderator or for the presenters, a short question and answer period will be made available at the end of this presentation. Should you have a question and you would like to ask one of the presenters, please make a note that the uh, question and answer box is located on the top left hand side of your screen. Now with no further ado, I would like to turn the uh, stage over to Kate Smith from Tourism Ireland. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to having you with us. Hi guys, so um, my name is Kate and I am filling in today just for Jonathan Sargent. So I am Marketing Assistant within Tourism Ireland. Um, so obviously welcome to the webinar. Um, I will just pull this up now. So today's webinar is on Ireland's Ancient East. Um, as Tabitha mentioned, we have Ireland's Blue Book with us and also Mount Juliet. So um, starting off, just access, um, as I'm sure you're all aware, between Toronto and Dublin um, has gotten much better in recent years. It's only a six and a half hour flight and we now have year round service from um, Toronto Pearson to Dublin um, and that is with Aer Lingus and Air Canada Rouge. Um, so Ireland's Ancient East, what is it? So for those who love to peel back the layers of time, Ireland's Ancient East is a wonderful opportunity to experience 5,000 years of European history in a compact space. So you are invited to walk through the footsteps of our ancestors and explore our rich histories in the very places that it happened. In 2013, we launched our Wild Atlantic Way, which was one of our big campaigns. But next year, in 2016, the Ireland's Ancient East will definitely be the big one that we'll be promoting. So what is it? It's broken up into four categories. So the first category is Ancient Ireland. So um, get up close to the stones and stories of Ireland's prehistoric past, hear tales of druids and mythical warriors told by locals in a magical and inspiring way. So one of the examples of our attractions within that, um, Newgrange is, um, here we have Newgrange, which is Ireland's oldest passage tomb at 5,000 years old. It is even older than the pyramids in Egypt. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And while its grass topped exterior is a visual treat, what really excites about Newgrange is what's on the inside. So come the winter solstice on the 21st of December, which is the shortest day of the year in Northern Europe, a shaft of sunlight creeps through an opening in the roof box. And the result is a resplendently illuminated inner chamber and one of the oldest sun celebrations on the planet. So the second category then within this is early Christian Ireland. So step into Ireland's golden age of saints and scholars and visit the university, the university and monastery sites where Ireland's pioneering saints and monks wrote some of the world's greatest illuminated manuscripts before spreading their learning and spirituality throughout a Europe locked in the dark ages. So pictured below here, we have Glendalough. It is a monastic mon settlement founded by St. Kevin in the 6th century. Um, Glendalough is in Wicklow National Park and um, it welcomes more visitors than anywhere else in the county. The Round Tower pictured here, um, we also have churches and graveyards and they're all associated with the religious site and are crowned by an awesome natural backdrop. So the third category then we have is Medieval Ireland. So explore the pathways and lush river valleys of Medieval Ireland to hear tales of invasions and rebellion and let your imagination take flight amongst the walls of Ireland's greatest castles and fortresses where foreign knights rested and the land and the old chieftains. So here pictures, um, we have uh, the Rock of Cashel, um, which is one of our medieval sites. Also, one of our well-known ones is Kil Kilkenny City. So Kilkenny is famous for many things. It's majestic creeper-clad castle, a bustling craft, craft industry, cobbled lanes and secret passages, 1,000 years of history and cracking festivals. So Kilkenny is jammed packed full of medieval history. Then our fourth and last category within Ireland's Ancient East is Anglo-Ireland. So discover the stories of a time of contrast which shaped the lives of the now settled conquerors of Ireland and those that they ruled over. This is the time of empire, rebellion, innovation and industry. So Viking heritage runs very deep in Ireland as a visit to Waterford, Kilkenny or Wexford testifies. They laid the foundations of many Irish towns, including 
Ireland's oldest city, Waterford, which was established by Norse settlers in 914 AD. So the Viking Triangle, as we call it, amongst these three counties in Ireland is very popular and interesting attractions amongst us. So how can Tourism Ireland help? Um, you can contact either myself or my colleague Jonathan. As I said, this is a big thing that we're going to be promoting going forward in 2016 and we'll have a lot more information on it. But today, the idea behind it was just to kind of give you an introduction of it and um, a brief overview of what, what the different themes are regarding it. And right now then, just to finish, I will just show you a quick video which hopefully will sum it all up for you. Now, so hopefully that kind of gives you more of an idea of what it's about. And as I said, it will be a big thing for us come 2016. Um, so if that video didn't work for anyone as well, by all means, I can send on the link. And as I said, feel free to contact either myself or Jonathan. So um, that's me done for today. So now I will hand you over to Ireland's Blue Book, who will be able to take over from here. Hi, good afternoon. I'm just going to share my screen now in a moment. There we go. Bear with me. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle McGuire and I'm here to talk to you from Ireland's Blue Book. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Blue Book, the Blue Book is a collection of historical country houses throughout the island of Ireland. And today what I'm going to focus on is the east of Ireland, so that you as a travel specialist get to know that area of the country a little bit better. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes on a little journey around the east of Ireland, getting to know that region, what you can see and where you can stay. Now, as Kate and Tourism Ireland said, it is a region of Ireland very rich in history. And when you're bringing clients into Ireland, it's got wonderful, easy access. A lot of these attractions can be seen from Dublin on day trips. But what I would recommend for your clients is that you get them out, have them staying in the east part of the country, getting to the, know the region in more depth. I'm going to start now up at the border with Northern Ireland in a typical Irish village. This is Carlingford village, it's medieval. And Kate spoke about the rich history that we have throughout the east coast of Ireland and Carlingford village is a classic example of that. I'm showing it to you because I think in a village like this, you've got a little bit of everything for your clients. You've got outdoor pursuits, you can go walking in the hills, you've got a cute little village where you can explore the local pubs and the local restaurants. 
just there on the horizon, I hope you can see this, but you can see St. John's Castle it's from the 12th century. So you've got a little bit of everything there. And actually, if you're wondering where the name Carlingford came from, it actually means the Bay of the Hag. And when the Vikings first came into Carlingford, I guess they saw a very attractive lady and decided the name the Bay of the Hag was perfect. But really, when I'm talking about Carlingford, I'm just giving you a sample of a, a beautiful little Irish village that your clients would really enjoy. Now, that's what you can see. So where can you stay? And that's where the Blue Book becomes part of your solution as a travel specialist. We have wonderful historic houses throughout the island. And Gann House in Carlingford is a classic example. It was built in 1720. Seven. So you have an example of that kind of colonial history in Ireland. It's a family run business and many of the Blue Book houses are family run. So it means your clients are going to have that warm Irish welcome when they come to stay in Ireland. So let's continue our journey down through the island of Ireland. We're going to pass New Grange, which Kate spoke about already. You're looking at 3200 BC. So all of a sudden, the Blue Book hotels from the 12th and 13th century don't seem so old. It really is a wonderful place for your clients to visit, either as a day trip from Dublin, or as I would suggest, is that you stay out close to Newgrange in Tankardstown House. Now again, a classic Blue Book house, a historical boutique hotel, and that's what we have in the Blue Book collection. This was built in 1722. Now it's a gorgeous, luxurious property. So for your clients that are luxury lovers, I'd take a look at um, Tankardstown. I'm going to continue our journey down along the east coast of Ireland because that's what we're focused on today. We're not going to talk today about Dublin in detail because I know a lot of you know Dublin well and have brought clients to Dublin for years. But just to say, if you have clients staying in the Viking founded city of Dublin, we have the five star Marion Hotel built in the 1760s. Perfect hotel for your clients in the heart of the city, close to um, all the old squares, so the Georgian squares up near the museums and the galleries and close to shopping as well. So just bear that in mind when you're thinking about a blue book property in Dublin city centre, we have Marion Hotel. We're going to move on down now out of Dublin and into a region of Ireland called Wicklow, it's County Wicklow, and it's known as the Garden of Ireland. It is really the perfect place for you. If you have clients that are only coming to Ireland for a few days, you need to be aware of Wicklow. It's perfect, like I said, as a day trip out of Dublin because it's got a little bit of everything. Kate spoke about Glendala, 6th century monastic site. It's set in a fantastic valley. It's beautiful walk for walking. I go out there every weekend to walk. So you've, if you are bringing clients to Ireland and they're very fit, they can do some of the, you know, the tougher hikes. But you can also just wander around the lake. So that's Glendala. It's just about a half an hour out of Dublin City. Also in that area, we have Powers Court House. And this is a different region in history. OK, and this is absolutely wonderful because the gardens here were voted by Lonely Planet as one of the top gardens in Ireland. So, again, what I'm trying to get across is if you have your clients staying in the east part of Ireland, there's got to be lots for them to do and see. Now, I mentioned taking the day trip out of Dublin, but really what I think is that you should stay in County Wicklow. This is Hunter's Hotel. They've been um, a, they're Ireland's oldest coaching inn. OK, so coaches stopped here through the centuries with travellers and visitors. The, it's been a hotel or it's been there since 1650. And over the years, it's had many famous guests. And this is where I'm going to do some serious name dropping. We've had royalty staying here. The king and queen of Sweden snuck away for a quiet weekend. And more recently, Steven Spielberg, he was trying to get Daniel Day-Lewis to sign up for Lincoln. And Daniel Day-Lewis just lives very close to Hunter's Hotel. And Steven Spielberg, the American director, stayed here at that time. And so did all the cast when they came over for the premiere. It's a charming country house hotel, beautiful gardens. A lovely classic example of a blue book house. Let's continue our journey in the east of Ireland. These are the Wicklow Mountains. We're going to cross over the Wicklow Mountains. Bear in mind this is about a half an hour for Dublin. So you've got this 
that's the wonderful thing about the east region of Ireland. You can land in Dublin and be in this beautiful, majestic scenery really, really quickly. And that's wonderful for your clients that don't want three or four or five hours in a car. We're going to cross over the Wicklow Mountains, leave that behind, and we're going to stop in another Blue Book house. This is Barberstown Castle. It's built in 1288, so it's got a long, rich history. It's actually been through all those periods of history that Kate in Tourism Ireland mentioned. I'm bringing this to your attention as a travel specialist because I think this is the perfect first or last night stay in Ireland castle. It's about 40 minutes from the airport because bear in mind we're still in that re east region of Ireland. Um, it's had many owners over, the, the, over its history. Actually, the current owner bought it from the singer Eric Clapton. Now, Barberstown Castle is in Kildare in the east of Ireland, and we call that, it's really the horse country part of Ireland. It's where all these wonderful Irish horses are bred. And I just want to draw your attention to somewhere quite interesting that you can bring your clients to visit, and that's the National Stud. It's very interesting to stop there. I think you'd be offering your clients something a little bit different on an Irish itinerary, and they're always going to look for that. And um, it's a wonderful experience for the day. And we've brought some journalists, some very high-end ladies from Marie Claire magazine and Vogue magazine, and they were just, you show, they just love this place. I think it really is a crowd pleaser. Now, if you are staying in the area of Ireland where all these wonderful racehorses are bred, why not stay in a converted stables? This is Ratsala House, another Blue Book house in this region, built in 1798. Um, Queen Anne Stables. It's just a gorgeous, romantic house. Um, I think it's wonderful in the winter with the roaring fires or in the summer with the gorgeous gardens. I hope you're kind of enjoying and you're getting a sense of the type of hotel the Blue Book offers your clients. Historic, romantic, interesting history. So it very much ties in with the region and with Ireland's ancient east. The other thing is, again, this is a family-owned business. And I think that is nice when people come from Canada that they're meeting the families when they stay in the houses. Now, we're going to travel much further, further south, and this is Hookhead Lighthouse. If your clients come to Ireland, there's lots of lighthouses all around the island to go and see. This is an example down in County Wexford. It's a lovely day trip. I've gone there myself. I can, it, I can recommend it. It's, it's very interesting. And I don't know if you know the term by hook or by crook. Apparently, that um, originates here where Cromwell said that he was going to take Waterford City which is a city in the area, by hook or by crook. I should mention at this point that if your clients are interested in staying in lighthouses when they come to Ireland, there are a number of lighthouses that you can stay in and rent. In the Blue Book, we have a lighthouse called Clare Island Lighthouse. It's off the west coast of Ireland, so the next stop is Canada or America. It's a five-bedroom um, lighthouse. So if you want to go onto our website after the webinar, www Ireland's Blue Book, and take a look at that lighthouse, it is somewhere very special to stay. Now we're still in this, it's, this is called Wexford. This is another example of somewhere that you could visit on a day trip and your clients can engage in Irish history. This is the Dumbrody ship. It's an example of the type of ship that immigrants left Ireland on during the mid 19th century during the famine. It's an interesting stop on a tour or an itinerary for your clients. What I would suggest if you are exploring that region, you should stay perhaps in Dumbrody House, another Blue Book house. You're getting a sense that yes, the, the Blue Book houses cover a lot of history. We've seen Barberstown Castle, 12th century. We've come up through you know, 17th, 18th and 19th history. Dumbrody House is another classic example of a Blue Book boutique hotel. What I think your clients would love about this hotel is, um, first of all, the food. The chef, Kevin Dundon, here on, he's on Irish TV every week with his um, food programs, and, and he's absolutely wonderful. But I love, they've added on a little bar, a little pub, a shibin, as we say in Ireland, on the grounds of the hotel. So it's a really wonderful place to stay and wonderful Irish hospitality. Let's move on now into the city of Waterford. So Dumbrody House, I just showed you, is very close to Waterford City. And if you are going to Waterford City, I would suggest that you do stop by the Waterford um, Crystal Experience. You, the craftsman, the master craftsman are there, and it is something interesting to put on your itinerary for your clients. What I'm trying to 
get across to you today is you have beautiful, interesting places to stay in the East region of Ireland, but there is also a lot for your clients to do. In the Blue Book, we've put up 22 sample itineraries on our website that travel specialists in Canada can use when you're putting together itineraries for your clients. I can send you on a link to them. Some of them are for you know people who love history, for garden lovers, for people who love the outdoor pursuits. So we have lots of itineraries up on our website that will help you. So let's move on. Now we're in Waterford City and we're going to meet the Vikings again, a very attractive bunch. I don't know if you can see this shot here. But Waterford City, as Kate mentioned, it has a Viking triangle. It's got a, a history that spans back centuries. In fact, Waterford is known as Ireland's oldest city and it was founded by the Vikings in the ninth century. So again, Waterford, Wexford, Wicklow, all the W's, these are very interesting places for your clients to stay. Let's move up a little bit on our trip and we're going to just stop briefly at Mount Juliet Estate. This is another gorgeous blue book house and we're lucky today because Lil Grant is going to follow me and talk more de in detail about Mount Juliet. So I'm not going to spend too much time on Mount Juliet because I'd hate to steal Lil's thunder. All I can say, it's one of my favorites. It's a gorgeous estate with absolutely everything that your clients could want. Let's move on now and we're still in the east of Ireland and we're going to Blarney Castle, okay? And many of you would have heard of, you know, Kiss the Blarney Stone. The thing about Ireland's ancient east, no matter where you go, you're going to come across these old castles, monuments, monasteries. I really need to get across to you today that there is so much for your clients to do in that region. You will keep them busy every day of their trip to Ireland. You will keep them fascinated. I wouldn't leave off. We've, we've looked at some things that are a little bit different. We've looked at the Dumbrody famine ship. We've looked at going to Hook Lighthouse. Kissing the Blarney Stole is pretty typical, but I'd still include it on an itinerary. And if you are in that region, I would recommend that you stay in Ballymaloo House. Ballymaloo founded the Blue Book in 1974, so we've been around for quite a while. The house itself, there's been a settlement there since 1450. So again, I'm giving you a sense of the history of the, re of the region and the type of hotels that your clients can stay in. Ballymaloo has forged this whole farm to fork philosophy in food in Ireland. And you'll find that throughout the Blue Book houses if your clients stay in a Blue Book house. The houses are set in large estates. The food is going to come from that estate. So you're going to have this warm, amazing, organic food on offer. Let's continue our whirlwind tour. And we're going to move up through the country. Again, we're heading back towards Dublin now. And we're going to stop briefly again at the Rock of Cashel. Kate mentioned it. It really is quite majestic. I would include it in any of your itineraries for your clients. Um, the buildings you're seeing here were built in the 12th and 13th century. And it was the seat of the High Kings of Munster. As you go along the road and you see this on the horizon, it is quite special. And I think your clients would really enjoy a, a stop there. Now, if you are in this, that part of Ireland, I'd suggest that maybe you stay in Castle Doru, another Blue Book house, this time built in 1716. So we have lots of Georgian properties in the Blue Book and Castle Doru, again, another example of a wonderful historical castle. They're celebrating in Castle Doru at the moment because TripAdvisor just awarded them one of the top 10 castle hotels in the world, which is quite an achievement. They have fantastic gardens. This shot was taken in the winter. Amazing rose gardens. We've done a whirlwind trip around the east coast of Ireland. And I suppose what I'm hoping, as I summarize now, that you'll get a sense that number one, if you send your clients to the east coast of Ireland, there's lots for them to do and see. They will be kept busy every day. There's lots of amazing places for them to stay as well, rich in history, with warm Irish hospitality and amazing food. If you want to know more about the Blue Book, you can log on to our website. If you want to book a Blue Book house, you can do so through a number of tour operators that have been handling the Blue Book for any number of years. And you can also contact me directly. I will send you on a link to some of those sample itineraries so you, they may be of use to you. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation. Um, it's been quick. It's been a whirlwind route tour, but hopefully you've got a sample. Thank you very much and thank you for your time today. Thanks for that, Jelly. We're just going to, my name is Lila Grant from Mount Julius, and I'm just going to 
set us up here and get us started. And at this point, I would like to advise all of our audience members that should you have a question for Lil, Michelle, or Kate, uh, feel free to put those in the question and answer box on the top left-hand side of your screen. Thank you, and Lil, whenever you're ready. Thanks, Tabitha. So just to recap, my name is Lil Grant, and I am based in Mount Juliet, which is located here in Kilkenny. So we're very lucky to be part of Ireland Ancient East. Um, it's a great part of, the, of Ireland itself. So if you look here, we're about an hour and 15 minutes from Dublin roughly about 30 minutes down to Waterford and just under an hour to Wexford. So great location in terms of visitors coming over. Mount Julius itself, so we're a 1500 acre country estate. So the manor house itself was owned by the McCalmond family and it's about 260 years old. It was family owned and it was sold in roughly 1984 to another family called the Mahonies who are based here in Dublin in Ireland. And they took it over and opened it as a hotel, so the hotel that we have it today. So within this building, we have beautiful lounge rooms. So this picture here is a picture of the main hall. So I suppose this is where your guests would come in and they check in in this area of the hotel. So you see there, John is one of our porters. He's been with us for 15 years. So a lot of the staff here in Mount Juliet are here similar to that where they'd be 15, 20 odd years. So part of the furniture really at this stage. This area then, this is the Tetrarch Bar. And if you notice up on the top left hand of the photo, there's a picture of a horse. So on the estate, we have Bally Lynch Stud Farm. Again, it was a huge part going back for the McCalmonts when they owned it as a family home. And there are five horses buried over in the clean graveyard. So a lot of the names throughout the hotel you will get from horses. So this one here is the Tetrarch. So the bar again, it's open. We serve great cocktails. So if people are down, you can have pre-dinner drinks and after dinner drinks in this area. The next photo, this photo here is the Major's room. So Major McCalmont, who was one of obviously the McCalmonts themselves, was named after him. This room again has, was done up last year. It's used to serve afternoon tea. There's beautiful views looking out over Ballylin Stud Farm and the River Nore, which actually runs through the estate itself. Here we have the Lady Helen dining room. Now we were very lucky. Last week we were awarded our Michelin star, which we held on to for three years in a row. So we're delighted. It's a huge part of the hotel and hard work done by the team here in the Lady Helen. Again, beautiful big windows which look out over the river and towards the stud farm. It opens five nights a week and it goes from 6 through to 9.30. In the main house then, there are 31 bedrooms. So obviously there are different styles of bedrooms. This photo here is one of our suites. So we have two suites, suites which are two rooms in each. Again, your views are looking out over the river. This one here is a standard room. So we have five standard rooms which look out over the front of the hotel. So they look out towards the paddocks and towards the wall garden. So again, there's beautiful views regardless of what room you're staying in here in the hotel. All of our rooms have been done up in the last two years. And in the next few weeks, we will be doing up the rest of the hotel. So just small refurbishments. Um, to keep it going. Again, it's 206 years old. It's something you have to do continuously. This room here is a river view. So we have eight of these river view rooms in total. Now, I'm going quickly through the rooms. So again, if anyone has questions, just let me know afterwards and I can explain this and, and go through the presentation a little bit more with you. Um, but again, it's just to give you an idea of the style and the theme. So they're all quite neutral in color, but again, it's a country estate. So it's in keeping with that style throughout. Lastly then, this room here is one of our superior rooms, and we have 16 superiors within the hotel. The superior rooms would be used for our family rooms, so there are a number of these rooms which would have an extra sofa bed, so a pull-out sofa bed, whereby if you had small children that would share a room, we could put them into these rooms. And three of those rooms there actually have an interconnecting garden, so they're absolutely lovely. Again. Depends, being in Ireland, about our sunny summers, but if you do have a good summer, there's the area there that you can just sit out, get a drink, and take in the sun. So moving on, we have another area of accommodation, which is called the Rose Garden Lodges. 
And this area is self-catering, or we'd also sell on a bed and breakfast offer. So there are 12 of these lodges in total. All the lodges are two bedrooms. So two bedrooms, both rooms are on suite, and then you have a kitchen and a sitting room in each of those. So again, they're great for space if you have a group of friends coming down, if there's people staying for a few days and just want that little bit of extra room, or else again, if you have families. So there's a playground located just beside these as well. So it gives you an idea of, of where you are. In terms of the manor house, it's about a two minute walk. But like that, if it was a bad day or if there's someone who didn't want to make and walk that distance down, the porters are on hand 24 seven. So they'll drop people up and down between the different areas. I've just added in a picture of our food and our chef, Ken, who is just, again, being awarded in Michelin. So we're very, very proud of him here in the hotel and his team, obviously. I also then wanted to show you this area here. This room is our boardroom. So we have three rooms within the hotel for meeting rooms in the clubhouse area of the hotel. This room here holds 20 people boardroom style and it's called the Jack Nicholas. So we have an 18 hole golf course on the estate, which I'll tell you a little bit about more in another slide. But obviously Jack Nicholas designed it for us. So with that, we've named this room after him. The reason being it looks out over the golf course area. So it's a beautiful room. The two other rooms would hold a capacity of up to 60 people. So again, if there's small meetings, we would be able to host them. Among the facilities then, we have the spa. So the spa is an ordering spa with five treatment rooms and it's available all day. The leisure center then will play a big part. So we have our swimming pool, we have our sauna and steam room. And again, we have a lovely area that guests can sit outside and just take everything in. Children are welcome in this area and there's also a gym. Um, our leisure center staff would host different activities and different classes. So if you were down and you want to take part in aqua aerobics, anything like that, we'd be more than happy to facilitate this for you also. This then we have the conservatory in the clubhouse. So if we have guests who come down and they stay in Mount Juliet house in the manor house, but they prefer something casual throughout the day for dinner or for lunch, you can sit in this area here, which overlooks the golf club. So again, beautiful views with a lot of windows, a lot of light coming into all of our facilities here. And we serve a really good bar menu with an extensive choice. Another activity we would have is the equestrian center. So we built a new equestrian center about five years ago. And again, we're very lucky with our 1500 acres, you can partake in trails. We have cross country um, and there's different areas and different walks that we can do. Some guests come down and they'd actually like to learn about lessons. So that's another facility that we can take. So Jenny and her team are on hand. They're absolutely fantastic. And the horses themselves are brilliant. Um, I went on one which was called Harry, tried to knock me off a few times, but we got there in the end. The next activity then, obviously golf would be one of our main activities. It's an 18 hole golf course designed by Jack Nicholas. So with the course, not only do we have the 18 hole golf course, we have driving range. There's also a bunker and chipping green. There's a practice putting green as well, which was what you saw actually outside the conservatory window where we can eat during the day. And we have an 18 hole putting course which is brilliant. If it's a case that guests come down and they're trying to fit in an awful lot in the day or a few days they're staying with us, but they do want to get out and play some golf, you can do that in an hour and a half and we have scorecards for that area as well. But like that, it looks easy. And again, from experience, it really isn't. So golf is a huge part. This area here, and we're coming close, this is located downstairs in Mount Julia's house, and it's called the Jinx Bar. So in effect, it's the basement of the main house. So in this area, you would have her fishing room. So you see Des there having a nice glass of Irish whiskey. So he would set you up, bring you out onto the river, and then organize ghillie for you so for fishing. But this room is also available as well as a bar area. It's very different upstairs. And I suppose going back to the history of the house, it would have been staff quarters originally, which is actually beautiful when you think of it as staff quarters. So that is Mount Juliet as a whole. We are very lucky with our product. Um, this is just the front of Mount Juliet house. So it gives you a better idea and a better style of, of how it works and the 31 rooms in there. Just while we're on, before I finish up, I just wanted to note with you that again, 
Ireland's ancient east, there is so much to do and see. And locally with us in Kilkenny, across the road, we have Durpoint Glass. So you can go over there at any stage and see this glass being blown itself. There's no cost to it. You pop in. Margaret, they're lovely over there and they'll help you out. And there's also a shop. Then you have Nocturna Goat's Cheese, which is five minutes over the road. You've Goatsbridge Trout Farm, which is a full functioning trout farm. Again, you can go down. You can see them taking the trout out and the whole lot and sample everything down there. Now, these again, Morgan McKinley. Or sorry, Karen Morgan is located just at the left hand side as you go out the entrance. And that's porcelain. Obviously, you have Manchelia's Equestrian Centre and the fishing. And then in Kilkenny, we have Kilkenny Castle, Durpoint Park, where um, St. Nicholas is buried, Smithings Brewery Experience, which opened during the year and is absolutely amazing. Durpoint Abbey, Nicholas Moss, the Moss Pottery, and then the Truffle Fairy, so chocolate. So there's lots to do, there's lots to see within Mount Juliet and just locally within a 20 mile radius. So that's everything from Mount Juliet. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen in. If you have any questions at all, please let me know and I can talk to you about them. Thank you. Fantastic, and thank you, Lil, for joining us. At this point, I would like to open the floor to the uh, two questions. And for all audience members, the question and answer box is located on the top left-hand side of your screen. We do have a question for all presenters, and I will uh, address this to the entire group. Uh, do the hotels mentioned allow for weddings, and are wedding packages available if so? I'll start with Lil. Please go ahead. We would definitely hold weddings here in Mount Juliet. We have a few different areas. So Mount Juliet House that you saw, we can hold up to 90 guests in the manor house. So between the Lady Helen and the parlour. And then we also have another area in the clubhouse, which is called Kendall's. So that would hold up to 160 people. Again, what would happen is your drinks reception would be held in the manor house because it's beautiful. You have the different drawing rooms to relax and take in your drinks, potter around and spend your hour and a half, I suppose, while the bride and groom are taking photos. And then from there, you'd go up to either of the venues. Our packages and our pricing are available on the website. And Alma Creed is our wedding coordinator here in the hotel. And she'd be happy to help you with any questions and queries that you have. Fantastic. And I'll now direct the same question to uh, Michelle. Yes, most um, Blue Book houses host weddings, including Mount Juliet. Um, the pictures I showed you today of Barberstown Castle and Castle Doro, they would host a, a number of weddings during the year. They have, like Mount Juliet, they have beautiful grounds. So that tends to keep your bride and groom, groom and groom, bride and bride happy. Um, you know, they can wander around, take wonderful photographs. We have a section on our website, um, especially for weddings. I would suggest that um, if you are interested in that particular area or bringing brides to Ireland, reach out to me, send me an email. I'll send you that link. It'll give you an idea of the different houses, what they can offer um, for your brides and grooms. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And at this point, it appears that we have no further questions for our presenters. So I'd like to thank them. And on behalf of uh, Baxter Travel Media and Tourism Ireland, I would like to thank all of our audience for joining us today. With us, we have had Kate Smith from Tourism Ireland, Lil Grant from Mount Juliet Hotel, and Michelle McGuire from Ireland's Blue Book. This is a reminder that the audio recording of this webinar will be available on Baxter Travel, uh, Baxter Travel Webcast YouTube page. And that link is available. Uh, should you have any questions for the moderator, they can be reached at T as in Tango, F as in Fish, Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y at Baxter.net, and they'll be happy to pass on any information you may have. At this point, I would like to advise you as well that we do have a uh, follow-up Tourism Ireland webinar, uh, Tourism Ireland Culture, Heritage, and History happening on the 29th, and we look forward to seeing you all there. Once again, a gigantic thank you from the staff here at Baxter, the team at Tourism Ireland, and uh, Michelle and Lil, if you'd like to say thank you, by all means, feel free. Thank you Great. very much, and thank you for your time thank today. You. Thank you very much. The same thing. Appreciate it. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Yeah, thanks very much, Robert and Tabitha. And as I said, um, this is a new introduction that we're going to have in 2016. So if anyone has any questions leading up to that, by all means, you can contact myself or Jonathan. Fantastic. And at that point, I would like to thank you and wish our audience members at home and abroad a fantastic afternoon. All the best and take care.